look forward to all opportunities of fellowship. I thank you for the invitation and thank you for the liberty to, to preach the word of God. Uh, as I always say, I'm always educated beyond my intelligence, but I thank God for the education I do have. I've sat in some of the finest men and women of God you can find on the planet. Read some of the greatest theological works and listened to some great preachers and uh, touched the lives of the great men. Just, just being around them. And I hope I got something from them just by osmosis. I don't hey. know. Some of them spit on me when they were preaching, but uh, I don't think it's a great blessing. I just want to talk about the simple pleasures of God. Hey. Uh, the radical difference between you and I and Almighty God. People just can't be pleased. Right. But God can. Amen. God can be pleased. That's uh, and we think he's so such a stickler and such a uh, and I know we're living in days when people want to rule without any rules. But God has plenty of rules. But uh, He's looking at the heart. He's looking at the motive and the intents of our hearts more than what He's looking at our activities. Because we can do a lot of good things and my heart might be in it. And, uh, but He does reward us doing our duty. But to what are we doing to do? God's more interested in the why than the what. And uh, so God can be pleased if somebody that's not very intelligent puts their whole heart and soul and mind and strength and does the very best they can with what they have. God gives them a full reward and somebody that can do more and has abilities to do more, more talents, and uh, as much is given, much more is going to be required. And some people with all the opportunities are not getting rewarded because uh, God sees the intent of their heart but they're really not, they're not really doing it for the glory of God. They're doing it for other purposes. And God knows all of our hearts. And the only way I know my heart is to be deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, trains and tries to Amen. And God said, I know your heart. And the way you find out what your heart is is by reading this book. Right. And the Holy Spirit takes the light of the scriptures and he shows us who we really are. And uh, I'm uncomfortable reading the Bible, but sometimes uh, when you get in the pit of despair, the only, way, what, the only thing you can do is read your way out. Amen. Just get, get along, just start reading. I read out loud as much as I can. I listen to uh, the Bible being read to me, and, uh, and then follow along in the, the text and get it twice that way. And so I just, the simple pleasures of God. We know that God is angry with the wicked every day. Yes. Every day, God is displeased and angry, and he, the lost people are under the wrath of God. But it, with God, He lives in eternity. He's not mad all the time. He deals with, oh, He deals in measure, and he, thank God He doesn't put in total wrath on anybody right now. He's saving that. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he's delayed. Uh, we get a lot of times, we, we Christians are bad about saying, well, you need to go ahead and forgive that person uh, so you're, you're free anyway. But God can't forgive somebody that doesn't repent. I can't forgive somebody that doesn't repent. Sure. Because I'm not bigger than God. But uh, we mistake God's forgiveness for God's forbearance. Sure. God is a, he's a God ready to forgive. Right. Uh, he's paid for the sins of the whole world, but everybody's not forgiven. Right. <clears throat> they don't sure. forgive until they bring repentance and faith, and then it is imputed to their account. As in the Old Testament, before the Old Testament, in the church age, and in the kingdom age to come, it's still repentance and faith. Yeah. God is pleased. So at his right hand, the Bible says in Psalm 16, verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Wherever God is, you're going to find some pleasure. Amen. God, God is a God that surrounds himself with color, with music, with the 
beauty, with architecture. Uh, he's a God that can be pleased. He, he created this. Can you imagine? This world is under God's absolute curse. And it's this beautiful. Can you imagine what it would be when he lifts that? If it's this beautiful now, can you imagine when he recreates a new heaven, a new earth, rainbow of righteousness, and God's uh, spiral chamber comes down and sits on this earth, and he, oh, I'll tell you, I've been all over this country, and I've been around the world many times, and this is a beautiful planet with yeah. a person. I mean, there's thorns and weeds and, and uh, devastation, and look at all the, all the devastation that God has made. Go out west of Utah and you find uh, one mountain that's solid green and it's got lush vegetation all over, sitting right in the middle of the desert. Sure. It's all around that one mountain. God makes sure that the rain comes through it. And it's just amazing what God does. But if you take away all the trees and the green and the smoky mountains, you'll have Utah. Yes. All right. You just, the, God has changed and uh, change the climate, change the jet streams, and uh, at any time you can change all of that. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me when they would find out that the jet stream is nothing more than an angel that redirected God's will and the winds and the climate and everything. And somebody said, well, we're, man is destroying the climate. No, you ain't seen nothing until God touches Hey. That man's not going to do what we cannot do to this climate, what God will do in the Revelation, and he's going to scorch men. The Bible says God had an angel pour out a vial, and it's going to scorch man on this earth. God, man doesn't do that. God does that. Yes. So uh, don't, don't, give, don't give man credit, even bad men credit, for what God is going to do one of these days. So the simple pleasure of God is, and his, his presence is fullness of joy. He, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented more than over one just person. So who's in the presence of the angels of God? Well, Jesus Christ is in the midst of, this, of the throne of heaven. He's right. And so it's Jesus that's rejoicing over a sinner that repent. Yes. It's Jesus that, that, is a, that yes. appreciates everyone. I mean, he can be pleased. He gets pleasure. Amen. And we, we talk about uh, precious in the light of the Lord. Precious to God. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. It's precious to him. Yeah. It's, it's not a bad thing. Uh, even if we're bad and he takes us home, it's still good. Right. He's getting us out of the mess and, and uh, he could have just saved us. The ushers came out. He killed us at the altar when we repented and received the Lord and Savior. Killed us right there and let the ushers take us out back and bury us. And we'd be in heaven going, ooh. Really worshiping and look at that here and pity and people that are still on the planet. But God is pleased with Himself. Amen. Yes, sir. I mean, yeah. the Bible says Where Psalm, Psalm 115, verse 3. Yes. He hath done whatsoever yes. He pleased. Yes. He's pleased. Yes. Sir. Uh, he's, a, he's a God that has a smile on His face, not, not a lightning bolt in His hand. He's right. A God that's ready to. Yeah, he's not a God. He's not ready. He's not willing to any there. God is a God that's he's, he's putting it off. He's putting it off. He's putting it off. Uh, and yet, because of the weakness of man, he's uh, getting worse and worse to see the beating to see. God is still long suffering. And he's just keep putting off judgment. He just keeps delaying because he, he wants he wants men to be saved. He had no intention of any man going to hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. And if anybody goes to hell, they're going against the will of God. Right. I don't have a Calvinistic bone in my mind, but I do believe God has a plan. Amen. And God will fulfill his plan. And I pray that uh, we'll understand that God is doing whatever he pleases. It pleased God so many, so many ways in the Bible. I won't get into uh. myself. Uh, and Psalm 1, look at Psalm 135. Psalm 135. Uh, can I get the four pages past 119 there? Psalm 130. 
Psalm 145, verse 6. The Bible says, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth and the seas and all the deep places. Well, I don't know. Why did God make that? Why did God do this? Why did God? I said, well, why didn't God put our nose on top of our head? Because he didn't want us to drown in a rainstorm. <laughs> I mean, God made man in his image after his likeness, and, and God wanted, he, he was pleased. He looked at his creation and said, I'm pleased. I'm well pleased. It was beautiful and well done. He made man. And then he stepped back and said, boy, he's good. Everything he did, he's good. And he looked at man and said, but I can do better than made a woman. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. That's too much. Hey, and uh, I'm gonna remember that one. I'm trying not to dig the hole any deeper. Hey. And uh, uh, God has done whatever He pleased, and whatever He pleased, whatever He did pleased Him. He's looked at all that He created. He was pleased. It was good. And so it's Isaiah 46 verse 9. Uh, Isaiah, I'm gonna have him turn. Isaiah 46. Verse 9. I, I know I don't, a lot of times I, I just go and quote the scripture that it's good that we follow and look at the scriptures. Isaiah 46, verse 9, the Bible says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, there's none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Pleasure has the root word, please. I'm going to do as I please. And you're never more like the devil than you want anyway to please you. Right. And not God. So that's one of the, you've got four left, okay? Hey. Uh, and so he get, he's pleased with himself. He's pleased with what he's done. He's pleased with how it came out. He said, I'm pleased and I will do all my pleasure. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18, he sat in the church as it pleased God. God set up the church. God set up the kingdom of heaven. God set up the order of the angels. God set up the order of man, man over woman, parents over children. God set up the order, man over beast, beast over the insect, God, and angels over us. But I'll tell you, God has set an order, and he's made us higher than the heavens, higher than the angels in authority after we get saved. We're now children of God, and now we're the sons of God. Right. We're not just sons like angels. Now, now we're above, know ye not that ye shall judge angels. Right. So we have higher authority. He's He's given all things to the church. Right. All things under the church, the bride of Christ. And so God is pleased uh, with himself and what he has done. The uh, Bible says that God is pleased with his son. He said in Matthew 3.11, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Yes. We're not pleased with Jesus, are we? It's like, well, he's not done all that much for me. Oh, take another look at Calvary. Yeah. I mean, just, what else you want him to do? I right. Mean, he's given you life and health and strength, and put you on a nice creation, down here probably being good parents, and uh, he's given you life and love, and he's given you the ability to learn and lean on Jesus, and he's given us opportunities to laugh. I mean, what else you want him to do? He's been good to us. He's a good God, a gracious God. He's a glorious God. And so uh, he set the church as it pleased God. He sent some in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, uh, pastors, teachers, and he's put them in to, to edify the church and build up the body of Christ and all these things. So God knew what he was doing and it pleased God. And so when you say, I'm not interested in church, you're not interested in what pleases God. Ah, ah. The, the church was set up by God. I mean, the purpose of a husband for a wife, God says, is that she might be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So the, the purpose of a man for his wife is to make her the best Christian she could be. Uh-oh. And that's what Jesus is doing for the church. 
He's doing, giving everything. He's giving servants of God. He's giving prophets and preachers and teachers to build the church up so the church and the, the bride of Christ can be beautiful. The queen of heaven one day. Not Mary. The church. Hey. Psalm 45 is talking about the church. And it was a mystery in the Old Testament. They didn't understand what that thought was. Right. Paul revealed it. But it was in the Old Testament. It was there all along. The Gentiles will become a special people unto him. It was in the Old Testament. Paul backed up everything about the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. He based it on Old Testament. He backed up everything that God revealed to him through the Old Testament. I, mean, I hear all the time people say, well, that's Old Testament. I just believe the New Testament. I think most of those people don't even believe the New Testament. But uh, they say, well, James isn't forced today. Hebrews isn't forced today. Uh, only Philippians, uh, Colossians, Galatians, uh, those are forced today. Roman was a, Romans was a progressive revelation type thing, and uh, it wasn't the same at the end. At the end. I mean, they pick out all the pieces of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, they don't apply to us today. That's for the kingdom. I mean, they, 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 they throw away the New Testament. I said, but oh, wait a minute. You take away the Old Testament that's quoted in the New Testament or applied in the New Testament, you take away 70% of the New Testament. Sure. Except for the Old Testament restated. Amen. So, the only reason we know the New Testament is correct is because it's backed up by the Old Testament. Uh -huh. So, uh, it pleased God. He's, God is pleased with His Son. Uh, Matthew three eleven, John eight twenty nine. I do. Jesus said, "I do always those things which please my Father." So God said, he, "Jesus said, all my prayers are answered. So I'm always doing what God wants me to do. I'm pleasing you." Yes. He said, "I know God the Father is with me because I do always those things that will please me." This life. So God the Father manifested His presence around Jesus because gee, God was so pleased with Him. Yes. Fact, I think I preached the message here uh, one time before. Uh, God is so pleased with the Son that we started this whole thing of duplicating. That's what salvation is. It's just duplicating the good Son. Right. He wants to bring many sons to glory. He wants to make us like Jesus. He wants us to grow up unto Him in all things. Amen. And that's what the teaching of the Bible is for. And so God is pleased uh, with His Son. Isaiah 53, 10. 53, 10. It even pleased the Lord to bruise him. Yes, sir. He was pleased with his son, and he put his public approval on him. He raised him from the dead. Amen. Raised him up from the dead. Said, you did it. You finished the job. You, you did what I sent you there to do. And then he ascended up to on high after he descended first to the wolf parts of the earth and, and brought back and set captivity free, took yeah. paradise to heaven and all those kind of things. And, and then he uh, came back and Mary not to touch him because he had not yet ascended. And uh, so, oh boy, he came, he came back and he physically manifested himself and got with his approval on him. And then God the Father drove, uh, set, helped him ascend right up to heaven. And the same Jesus which is taken away from you shall so come in like manner as you have seen him depart. He's just going to descend from heaven ah. and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead of Christ and the life of the we which are alive from the caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so there's nothing to do with the second coming. That's the rapture. Because when he comes the second time, he's going to come as light and comes out of the east up even into the west and coming back on the white horse. And we're riding with him. Hey. Now you can, you can slice and dice the Bible so much that you get silly. Uh -huh. I, I was preaching and I mentioned the fact that there's ar the armies are in heaven are coming and we are coming with them and the armies have uh, robes white and clean and the saints are with them riding on white horses and robes clean and white. He says, there's a difference. One's white and clean, the other's clean and white. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I... Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Word order was for the pros, P R O S E. Make the sentence flow. It was it's a literary thing. It wasn't a translation thing. Okay. Oh. Ah. Uh, uh, you, I couldn't get it across to you. I never. Ah. Uh, he's good. He's a good man. Smarter than me, but he is. Oh. Uh, yeah. All of us are smarter. Yeah. Yeah. Beyond the depth. Misses some stuff. 
said, so God's pleased with himself. He's pleased with his son. God is pleased with his ministers. Yeah. And those are the people that need courage more than anybody else. You would think. But I think all across this country, I know pastors that have given their lives 50, 60 years to the ministry, and they die alone, sick, with nobody. They, and I get to visit some of them, and I tell them, listen, all those promises, you gave all those sheep that you, you tended, every promise of God that you gave them belongs to you. Amen. God loves his ministers as much as he loves the people that he, they minister to. And us preachers sometimes forget that. Well, God loves the church. Yes, but I'm a man of the church. Hey. God, God, God loves the bride. I'm, I'm just called out for a specific duty and responsibility. Maybe others don't have that. But uh, God is pleased with his ministers. Psalm 103, verse 21. He said, his ministers that do his pleasure. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it next time. <laughs> <laughs> 
said, but he didn't. Yeah. God is pleased with us. He's pleased with his soldiers. He's pleased with his ministers. In Psalm 149, verse 4, God takes pleasure in his people, just like a shepherd takes pleasure in the sheep. Find his work. Oh, here comes here come the hundred. Oh, there's only 99. Oh, no. God, oh, off again. Well, I'll, I'll, you, I'll just forget that one. I'll just dip all the put the oil on all their heads and get rid of the ticks and parasites and fleas. And, and I'll dip that one in the creek and put them out. He said, oh, man, it's work. No, he names them. He, he pets them. They're, they're special to him. He, and then he shears them and sometimes eats them. But, uh, but uh, I, I didn't mind goat meat, but I've never had like, like, man. I, I just, nobody ever had knew how to cook it, I guess. God is pleased with his people. He, he has an individuality. He, he takes pleasure in his people. He takes pleasure in somebody with, with silver here. He takes pleasure in the fact that they have here. He said that he takes pleasure in people. That, that just have blue eyes and brown eyes and have two black eyes. I mean, he, God, God knows who's standing for him and who's fighting for him. I'm struggling. <laughs> it's, it's the apple pie that I eat. But uh, what pleases God and his people? I mean, he is pleased with his people. First Thessalonians 4 1. How that you ought to walk and to please God. He's pleased when we just walk right. Yes. Just have a good walk. Walk with him. Not behind him, not ahead of him, but beside him. Yes. He just wants us to live like uh, in all our ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. He, he takes pleasure in his people by our walk. He takes pleasure in, in, in his people by the way of praise. He said in uh, Psalm 69, verse 30 and 31, this shall please the Lord. What? Our praise. Let's look at that. Psalm 69. Since I've got that far off. Psalm 69. <clears throat> Verse 30. The Bible says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox who bullet that hath worn his boots. God is much more interested in the intents and motives of our heart why we're doing what we're doing. Right. And he is in the walk of it. And, and when we're praising him and thanking him and worshiping him, he's pleased. And when we're doing that, we're taking part with a great vast multitude in heaven that are doing the same thing. Uh, Psalm 147, verse 1. Uh, as a person who hears what others say about us, I don't know. So 147, I, I need to look at this one again. So 147, uh, verse number one, the Bible says, Praise you the Lord, for it is good to sing praises of our God, for it is pleasant and yeah. praise God. It's pleasant. God would rather, when everything's going bad, just, just run back and sing. When you're locked in the, in the prisons, and you've been beaten, and you, you got the threat of being killed in the morning. Paul and Silas sang praises at midnight. And it pleased the Father, and he started shaking the post. <clears throat> he take a Psalm 147, verse 11. The Bible says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Yes. It takes pleasure in it. Fear the Lord. That's just an absolute reverence and respect for him, his person, his words, uh, his ways. And, uh, a respect for God's person, respect for God's presence in his temple, respect for God's providence, respect for God's promises, respect for, uh, for the, God's people. Uh, there's so many things. These all please God. Mm -hmm. He liked God takes pleasure in preaching. Yes. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. We say that. 